I'm pleased to announce that upon completion of all the necessary checks by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, I will send to the Senate the nomination of Judge Sandra Day O'Connor of Arizona Court of Appeals for confirmation as an Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. Oh, wow, look at that history. That was President Ronald Reagan in 1981 announcing his decision to appoint Sandra Day O'Connor as the first woman to serve on the Supreme Court. She retired in 2006 to care for her husband, John, after he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. In a letter Tuesday, O'Connor announced she too has dementia, but remains grateful. She wrote, how fortunate I feel to be an American and to have been presented with the remarkable opportunities available to the citizens of our country. I never could have imagined that one day I would become the first woman justice on the U.S. Supreme Court. Sandra Day O'Connor's youngest son, Jay, joins us this morning here at the table. Good morning. Good morning. Since we learned of your mom's diagnosis, she has been on the minds of so many people. How is she doing? She's doing fine. Uh, she lives in Phoenix. Uh, this was um, a, a, an important moment for her to be open with people about what her condition is. She wanted to share the news herself and be transparent about it. It's a problem a lot of people have, and uh, she, wanted, she thought it would be helpful to get it out in the public. Yeah, but this is round two for the family, you know, because you went through it with your dad, and family members have said this was her biggest fear, one of her greatest fears. Do you recall what her reaction was when she was diagnosed back in 2014? She didn't want to believe it. Yeah. Uh, she had seen how hard it is and uh, what happens uh, to someone as they progress through the stages of the disease, and she really didn't want to believe it. And uh, she had been, her whole life, uh, she has overcome so many obstacles, and I think she thought, I can just power through this. and. It turns out you can't really power, th uh, power through dementia and Alzheimer's. Yeah, she's a fighter. She fought through cancer. Um, but you said that you started noticing the family members, early warning signs when she would give speeches and start repeating things. We did. You'd have, like we would, you would see, we'd have a conversation with her, and it was, we would notice things that, that most people wouldn't notice. And you started to see these little things, and, and my mom would come a little bit, oh, I can't remember that. And so we saw uh, the signs, and at some point she went in and had a conversation with her doctor. To, you know, just check things out, and, uh, and the diagnosis came back. Jay, when people lose their parents, particularly ones who live these kinds of amazing public lives, they sometimes say, oh, I wish I'd asked them this. In 2014, did you say, you know, I'd like to ask mom about this or that or the other thing? Well, we've been able to have a, um, uh, the whole time a lot of conversations, and so fortunately, it's a, it's a gradual uh, condition, and so we've, we, there's nothing really that we haven't been able to ask her. So she can still communicate. She knows who you are. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. She loves. Yeah. Give uh, us a sense of her day-to-day -day life. How she's yes, doing. Yes. She lives now. Uh, she also is mainly restricted to a wheelchair now, and so she's got um, mobility challenges. So she lives in an assisted living community where she can. She actually has friends living in the same place with her, and uh, and she loves having visitors, loves having family, loves hearing the latest with the grandkids and what they're up to. And so you can have a wonderful conversation with her. It's your short-term memory is challenged these days. One of my favorite stories, though, about your mom is that when your dad had it and he was in a facility, he developed what they're calling a romantic relationship with someone else and that your mom was actually supportive. Well, what happens, it's not uncommon when people reach a certain stage in their relationship, uh, it, they have these accidental or unintentional relationships very innocent. It's almost like a, a little kid relationship with a boy and girl. And there was a woman in the facility who he had a, a nice relationship with. And my mom embraced it because it was a companion. It made yeah, him feel him. good. And, uh, and so all of us embraced it. And I will never forget, my mom would go over to visit. And sometimes the three of them would be sitting on the same bench together, passing the time. My, my dad is in the middle. It was really something. You know, Jay, one of the things that Maria Shriver, who's talked so much about Alzheimer's, is what a burden this is in some ways for caregivers. It's really tough on a family. Yes. Now that you have two parents who have suffered with dementia and Alzheimer's, how are you doing? We're doing okay. You know, it's, uh, my mom uh, is not only a national treasure, she is a family treasure. So it's hard for all of us to see her kind of go through this. It's a progressive condition. It keeps on getting worse over time. Uh, but my mom has handled everything with grace mm -hmm. and dignity. And, you know, we're just so proud of everything that she's done in her life and who she is as a person. So we feel honored to be able to help her at this time when she needs help, just as she was a caregiver for my own, for, for her dad. Are you, are you and your siblings worried about yourselves? 
Uh, well, it's not a good thing to have two parents yeah, who've had right. dementia, so you never know. Definitely the odds get higher, so um, you've got to eat your veggies, and we're all keeping our uh, <laughs> <laughs> keeping our fingers crossed. Brussels uh, sprouts are amazing, yeah, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. It's a lesson from mom. The yes. <laughs> no, you know, listen, every, all of us, this issue is so important to Americans in general, so yes. it's important that the research still happen, and every family will benefit from, uh, from the research that comes out. Mm -hmm. Have the other justices reached out since the diagnosis? Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, there was an incredible series of tributes that went out from all the current and past justices who my mom ever served with that went out uh, at the end of Tuesday. And uh, the tributes were really wonderful and meant a lot to her. And so she's already seen those tributes and uh, it meant a lot to her. She mastered work-life balance, never missed your summer camp drop-offs. Yeah. I love that about Absolutely, her. Absolutely, yeah. right. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Jay. And we should say before you sat down, we asked you, did she watch the Kavanaugh hearings? And you said, no, not really. So that's she why we're not discussing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're thinking right. of her. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for you. joining us.